tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at something that's pretty important in the land of ios and that is model view controller and otherwise known as uh, mvc and the mvc pattern is something that's super essential to ios development and understanding how things are built we're going to be first looking at the various nuances of it explaining what it is then we're gonna we're gonna dive into a coding example to see MVC in practice uh, and clarify things, hopefully through code. So what we're going to start by doing is let's open up Safari and let's just search in our favorite search engine, iOS, M iOS, M VC. And let's go to images. Hopefully we can find a good image to illustrate this. This is actually perfect. So MVC, like I mentioned, is a design pattern in iOS. Uh, and to be clear, it's actually not iOS specific. It's popular in iOS, but it's used across a lot of different software stacks. And there's these three pieces called model view controller, and you can see these arrows um, going in a couple directions. So let's talk about each of these. The controller is a object that, like the name implies, controls things. So its job is to talk to the model uh, talk to the view and talk to other pieces that you want things to happen in. Whether that's fetching data from the internet, whether that's saving data on the user's drive or on the iPhone for our case, uh, so on and so forth. So we have this arrow going from the controller to the model. Now what the heck is a model? Model is just an object that represents your data. So dealing with Swift, uh, it could be a struct, it could be a class, it could be something similar to that, but let's take an example of a Facebook per, uh, profile for a person. The model could be things like their name, their age, their height, their weight, their location, their profile picture, so on and so forth. Lastly, at the bottom left, we have the view. And as the name kind of implies here as well, the view is kind of the view. So it could be a button, it could be an image, it could be anything that the user sees in the user interface. So generally in this pattern, you have uh, well-defined relationships where the controller can tell the model to update itself. Let's say someone wanted to change their location on their Facebook profile, sticking with that example. The model will tell the controller, hey, I finished updating myself. The controller will tell the view, the model updated, you should update yourself. And the view can also tell the controller once interactions happen. So an example of that is if there's a button, when you tap the button, we want the controller to go, let's say, load someone's profile or maybe go like a post. We want something to happen, but we want the view to be able to convey that to the controller so the controller can go and do that action on our user's behalf. So that's model view controller in a nutshell. Now, there's a bunch of patterns out there other than MVC uh, that I will be doing videos on, so stick with it. Uh, and there are trade-offs to all of these, but this is the most essential one, I would say. This is how Apple uh, started. This is how everyone started building iOS over 10 years ago. So let's start with this one and we'll, we'll expand uh, with future tutorials. So we can close out of Safari and we're gonna fire up Xcode, do a new project, and we're gonna build something with MVC. So let's click a single view app, call it what you'd like, save it where you'd like and let's say command r to run it we can expand our xcode window here to give ourselves some more room to work and i just want to briefly explain what we're going to be building before we get started so we have we're going to have a controller we're going to have a view which is going to be a ui view with a label in it and we're going to have a model for a person similar to the facebook example that we mentioned so Xcode already gave us actually with this template app a controller. It's this view controller class here. So what we need to do is add a model and add a view. So a model is often represented as a struct in Swift. So let's go ahead and add a struct. Let's call it a person. And we're gonna have some properties in here. We're gonna do first name, last name, gender, age what else should we do let's do weight even though that's technically not a part of our facebook example that's okay though height 
And last one we'll do, let's do location as a string. So this is a model that can represent a person. Now models, as you can imagine, can get massive and you can have models in models. So let's say instead of location being a string, this could be a location and we can create another model called location. This could have like city, uh, so on and so forth. I'm not going to waste your guys' time by going through that, but models can get pretty big is the point. So now we have our model and we want to create a view, uh, particularly a subclass of a UI view to be the view piece of our MVC. So let's right click, new file, Cocoa touch class. We're going to create a sub view of UI view, which is what it's going to inherit from. And let's call it example view. Now example view is going to have a label. And what we're going to do is our app is going to show the view here it might be like a different color, maybe like blue or something. And we'll have a label in it. And we're going to use the model to configure that label. Uh, and that's going to kind of exemplify the relationship that the controller will kind of speak between the model and the view, similar to the picture that we saw earlier. So in here, we want a couple of things. We want a label, initializer, and some layout code so we can lay out our label properly so things aren't overlapping. So let's start with a label, UI label. And we're going to say label dot text alignment. Let's make it centered. Now we want to override the initializer. So we're going to go with this one. Cool. And what we want to do is, um, let's see, we can leave that there. It's going to probably give us an error. Yep. Because it wants a required one. So you can actually hit that and hit fix and Xcode will automatically add it for you. We also want to override layout subviews. This is where we can do our actual layout code, particularly for this label. And we can say label.frame. Um, we can actually, yeah, let's actually do this. Let's not shorthand it for the sake of this video. So we're going to say the X is going to be zero. The Y is going to be zero. The width. Uh, is going to be the frame of this size with minus 20. And lastly, let's do the height, which is going to be the height minus 20. And let's actually make these 10. So there's going to be uh, this label centered in this view, leaving 10 on both the top, left, right, and bottom. Um, let's give a background color of this uh, view. Let's do... Uh, background color is red and this should build let's go back to our view controller and um, let's add a function which is an override view to layout sub views this uh, this function gets called when um, the views have laid out any sub views for this view controller so it's generally good practice to do your layout and new code add here uh, or your new view ads here so we're just going to add this. If you're not familiar with this function, that's okay. It's a little out of scope for this video. So we're going to do super view did load or sorry, view did layout sub views. Let's grab our new view. We're going to say let view equals example view. And we're going to say view add sub view view. Let's actually change the name of this. Let's call it my view. So the names don't collide. So this view refers to the view for this view controller. Whereas my view is our new example view that we made. And let's actually initialize this with a frame. Let's say CG rect. We're going to say X is, let's just do zero. Y is zero. Width is a hundred. Height is a hundred. Um, but we want to center this view in our controller. So let's just do my view dot center equals uh, view dot center. And then let's say command R to run it. And we see our view here. We have a background color, which is red, but we don't have a label or we have a label, but actually there is no uh, text in it. So we can't see it. And I didn't add a color to it either. So let's go back to our example view that we made. 
and let's do a couple of things. Firstly, let's add a background color to this. Let's make a blue. Um, let's make our, well, let's see, let's make a black and actually let's make our uh, text color white. So this will be a little easier to see. So let's run it again. And we're still not passing in our model, but and we actually don't see our label. So let's see what we missed. Uh, so we need to actually add a sub view, which is actual, actu the actual label. But there we go. We have our black label in the red view, and we've uh, centered it essentially with this layout code here, which is saying uh, lay it out 10 from the x, x axis, 10 from the y, which is top down, and the width minus 20, and the height minus 20, uh, in essence, centering our black view in here. But we still don't have any text. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a function on this view and let's call it, well, it's going to be public firstly, and let's call it configure with name. And we're going to say the labels text equals name. And let's go back to our view controller. Let's make this a little bigger. Let's do 250 by 250. Now we also need to create an instance of our model. So let's say we want to create a person. We can do it up here. So let's do let person equals person. Let's say John Smith male 25. Uh, I don't know, 175.0. I did double here, huh, for height. Uh, 72.0, I think that's 72 inches, six feet. And location is gonna be a location. Let's actually get rid of location for the sake of simplicity um, and getting to the point. So we can get rid of location here. But cool, we have this person here. And what we're gonna do is we added this new function on our uh, example view, but what we so what we can now do is say my view dot configure with and it wants a string and we want to pull the person's name out of here. So we have a first name and last name in here. So what we can do is we can actually pass in that dot first name at a space dot last name. And if we run it, we'll see hopefully our name in here, like we expected. So I ran through this super fast uh, and I have every intention to explain everything we've done. Uh, so bear with me. So first and foremost, we have our controller that Xcode gave us as a part of our template. We then went and added a struct, in this case, a person. We also added a location struct to exemplify that structs can be uh, within other structs, or sorry, models can be within other models. In this case, we're using a struct to represent it. From there, we went and created a subclass of a UI view called example view. We added a little bit of code in here. So the first thing that we added is a label. And this label, we've configured it in here a little bit. So it has a black background, white text color, the text is center. We overrid the initializer and we basically said set the background color of this view to red and add the label sub view. This required initializer is required by Xcode um, for various reasons that are out of scope for this video. So this one was automatically added for us. We've then added a public function called configure with name, which is a string, which when called sets the text of our label. We overrid the layout sub views function, which basically gets called to lay out our subviews as the name implies. And in here, we've specified the X, Y width and height for our label. And last but not least, if we go back to our view controller, if I can type today, what we have done up here is created an instance of our person in this variable called person. And we've supplied all these fields that we put down here. So first name, last name, age, etc., etc. We added this view did layout sub views function that we overrid. In this function, we create an instance of our example view with a frame. We've specified zero, zero, 
um, and the width and the height. We then center this my view in the current view. We add it here, uh, my view, we add the my view to the current view, which is the view controller's view. Uh, maybe these names could have been picked a little uh, better to be less confusing, but, and before we added this, we actually call that configure function that we added um, on my view. And we pass in a string, which we've built from the person's first name and person's last name. And again, this person came from our variable up here, which is a instance of this model. So we have the model, the view and the controller. Uh, and yeah, that's really is that's really just about everything there is to it. Um, the thing that we didn't exemplify here is the person uh, interacting with the view and the controller being updated. But we can basically assume that an IB action or a button click is equivalent to that. Um, I have several videos actually that go into IB actions and those types of functions. I encourage you to watch those. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. I do regular videos on Swift, iOS, other technology, software development. Like if you liked the video, of course, if you found it helpful. Comment if you have any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. If you want to say hi, uh, I always love hearing from those that watch the videos. And yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.